Hello and welcome to Tangential Diatribe, a platform for two lads to say they will talk about one thing and in which they will invariably talk about something completely unrelated and other things. With me as always is Leif and I'm Ronan V. How are you Leif? You good? I'm fine. Yeah. Everything good for you? I'm alright buddy. I'm a little bit tired, I won't lie. Um, If I struggle to say the names of authors or remember the names of authors um i'm gonna put it down to that i will also apologize in advance because it recently got pointed out to me that anytime i can't remember a name i just insert bloody <laughs> um so that's very much going to be on my mind so it's going to be about grimdark books then i assume yeah bloody uh everything <laughs> <laughs> very much so shall we just jump right into it sure no let's preamble um no things. Um, I'm just going to throw out a bugbear before we do. Mm-hmm. Um, recently reading a novel, and it did that. I think we may have talked about this last week. Okay. Uh, not as specifically. It threw out this, if you like uh, such and such author, yeah. you will like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think, did we talk about this last week? I have no idea. But I 100% agree. That's the most ridiculous thing ever. Yeah. It, at, at this point, it's been wrong so many times that yeah. I basically almost try to avoid looking at the text in right. front of the book yeah i mean if you're gonna throw that out you know set the bar low yeah you know don't don't go oh if you're a fan of george r, r. martin yeah you'll enjoy this also hob does a lot of those robin hob yeah what do you like mean? recommends books oh no i don't mean an author recommending a book because mm-hmm. that's fine like that's personal choice they yeah, can like they write any garbage things yeah they write like oh splendid action yeah and it's not action at all I'm like, a lot of the times you'll find that's because that person was in their writing group or yeah. was one of their beta readers yeah, and okay. they're trying to help out yeah, yeah. um what's the name of your man um he has a fantastic uh quite a large uh beta readership bloody <laughs> bloody yeah, right yeah. um i can't remember it'll come to me later on uh, but bloody uh, blood it, face. there's a specific author and i want to say brandon sanderson but i don't think it is um yeah. Although he's a teacher, yeah. and a lot of authors have come out of his writing groups, um, but they have a tendency to recommend authors, okay. and you, you later find out, oh, they were in your writing group. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So did you even read the book? Like, I'm sure they did, but, oh, but that's different to what I was going to talk about. Okay, so what, what I'm saying is, like, the publisher going, if you're a fan of Brent Weeks, uh, you'll love such and so, right? That and means nothing. It, it doesn't. Like, it could say, you know, if you're a fan of Grim Dark. Yeah you'll like this mm-hmm. okay that i can take but if you say uh if you're a fan of uh george r, r. martin brandon yeah. sanderson you like this what you're essentially saying is you like a good book no this <laughs> then writing, you like another good book you're saying this writing is on par yeah and that's not never true no ever. it's ridiculous yeah. it's it's it, anyway i recently read a book um and it said um if you're a fan of brent weeks or peter v brett you're gonna like this book and you know caveat in mind that i've been burned in the past <laughs> numerous times i went i am a fan of both of those authors awesome this must be the yeah. best book ever so I went, i'll give it a go i've never heard of the author or these books but you know why not i got some time to kill is this your book review today? This, we've got we've gone into my book review nice yeah. <laughs> um i'm gonna go is that all right yeah, yeah, first? yeah. Shoot, go go be weird if we sag to yours unless you had a lovely intro yeah yeah like no. that so um i've been reading and i finished uh, his books i've done what i always do which is even and spoiler alert i'm not a massive fan mm-hmm. um i read everything yes so this lad uh, this is mike morris um Ooh. mike morris he's an author okay that, that's what i said I, I think i'm not even sure if he can get his books uh, in uh you know solid copy if you will oh okay yeah. like paper in your hand i yeah. think there are ebooks yeah i kind of like that format but you have to find the good ones yeah yeah right i go for it and to be fair mm. if you were on a beach somewhere and you just want to let your mind wander away these are good books 
Basically, he has um, two series um, ongoing. Okay. The first one is the Jack Frey novels, which is the ones I read first. Yeah. Which um, I'll get into them a bit more. And then you have the uh, the Nathaniel Rain. Okay. Um, Jack Frey is two point five books in, and Nathaniel Rain is one book in. Okay. So already, I've read a number of books, and I I haven't climaxed yet. On either of them so it's already a little bit irritating yeah. um, the first one Mike Morris the Jack Frey novels uh, the premise uh, yeah. I think you wouldn't you would like the premise initially um, uh, young boy you know saved from the gallows has to go uh, warrior monks basically Ooh, I like um, monks yeah and be trained to be a warrior monk and he's against it but there's schooling involved um, and all this and I love that, that type of thing yeah. and I know you do so especially the cloister teachy yeah. moments that's also always a good thing right great great I love it too mm -hmm. um, the whole premise is uh, it's on a world uh, there's vampires but the vampires are they're not your grandpappy's vampires okay. these are badass vampires who have already won okay, okay. so humanity has retreated to an island that the vampires can't get to because it's more than a day away and obviously vampires can't be in the oh, daylight that, oh, right that, don't even don't even okay don't what? even the premise sounded so good until yeah. that point yeah don't even because i'm already with you i'm already with you uh, but sure you know a lot of fantasy films whatever you got to suspend a little bit of belief no yeah you do i mean of course you do no yeah of course dragons no. the maid of that's just a, a tiny increment of a leap from a the, wizard. What's what's the thing? Um, you know, the bigger something gets, the larger the mass. Yes. What's that thing? Uh, the law. Yeah, but that's because anyway, of gravity. Yeah, yeah. It, dragons can't exist. Why? And carry a human? Yes. They can't. Not now. But the, the physics of our world, so they can't exist. Before the cataclysmic, cataclysmic <laughs> event, yeah. uh, of course, we were all riding dragons. Anyway, okay, <laughs> fine. Yeah, of course. We or they were eating us. I'm not right. sure. Yeah. Anyway, it's called uh, dinosaurs, man. Look it up. Well, <laughs> dinosaurs different. Um, the what was it? Not the gravity, but things were lighter back in the dinosaurs' time, weren't they? No, I, I, my, I, I'm not 100 percent sure, but yeah. I'm guessing gravity to make that possible to sustain such a huge life form or some way something yeah. changed, right? Because but that's not possible anymore. Uh, it was less dense or something uh, yeah yeah know. maybe that's i think true. it was that yeah, yeah. but there's yeah. a reason why things get bigger exactly. like insects can only get so big yeah right before they well, can't they can't have you been to australia right <laughs> but that's it you know yeah. surely is weird anyway premise yeah, yeah. Sure. vampires yeah. Back again. Uh, humanity has retreated to this island yes. nation um it's been a number of years uh to the point where the average joe in the street almost thinks of the vampires as a myth because they're across the water, they never get seen, they've mm. never crossed the water, mm. blah de blah de blah. Yeah. Um, the novel is told through the eyes of two people. One is Jack Frey. Wait, are you spoiling the book now? No, no, this is all oh, blurb. Okay. Yeah. One of them is Jack Frey, yep. the other is Lynn. Yep. Lynn is a slave yep. who basically the vampires obviously have a breeding stock mm. and different thing and warriors uh, protect She's not on the island. Though. A familiar, yeah, if you will. Yeah. So she Lynn is on that side, mm. Jack Frey is on this side. Oh, yeah. Um, the warrior monks are called the black dogs. Mm. Cause of course they are. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I, I feel like when I when I read Black Dogs, I was like, I am sure I have read other groups of people in fantasy novels called the black dogs. Hundred percent. Yeah, or the black shields or something. Generally, a regiment of some yeah. soldiers. Back yeah, then. yeah, well, anti heroes. It happens. Yeah. A anyway, so that's the basic premise. Mm. Um, Jack Frey is a street urchin, because mm. of course he is. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's rescued from the gallows by a warrior monk who then and on this utopian island why do they need urchin it's, it's, it, it, it's a little bit grimdark okay I, it, as I say it's not your grandpappy's I can't decide it sounds decent and then yeah. it sounds bad and then it sounds decent that's where I'm at right, right. I think if they if he'd stuck to it and he was I'm not gonna say a bad writer because it's not mm. badly written um, but it's too quick the, so in what sense well the schooling Ah, okay. I love the schooling. Yeah, um, that should be a whole. It's book. rushed. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's very rushed. Okay. Um, there's flashbacks. There's some flash forwards. Mm. Um, it's all incredibly rushed. Everything mm. happens too fast. Yeah. And 
you got to build, you got to earn it. Yeah, of course. And you don't really get that. But it's good. There's, there's good cast characters. Mm -hmm. You know, the vampires, when you finally do get to meet the vampires, mm -hmm. they're dangerous as hell. Okay. You know, it's it's like these warrior monks are trained and trained mm -hmm. to be the perfect killing weapons. And then a vampire just fucking kills them all. Okay. You know, it's one yeah, that's vampire. That's kind of nice. That you know? can be... Add to gravitas. Yeah. So basically, the the two novels, which yep. are Cry Havoc and Cry Fear. Yep. Yeah. Fine. Very fantasy, you know, names. Yeah. Um, but basically, it's about Jack Frey mm. being brought up, uh, becoming a black dog. Him and his brother, in fact, and that becomes... I won't get into that too much because that's spoilers but him yeah. and his brother are both rescued from the gallows mm. and all of this the second book is dealing with the vamp one vampire actually comes across to the island then everybody's dead uh well basically almost an entire city okay. is killed but one vampire so like they're dangerous as all hell yeah. but i mean you you already scoffed because of the it's a day away obviously <laughs> yeah. you know just you know build a hold like, you know he could have written anything he could have written oh it's so far away that you have to basically not go to you a uh, normal path for the yeah. boat. That yeah. would be that that would be sentence more sensible, yeah. right? He, he addresses it somewhat because mm. apparently the black dogs are trained to be infiltrators, so they actually go across the vampire's okay. world mm. and they like burn ships and oh, another one I should have got in this as well. Um, there's gunpowder, so it's a powder mage ah. a little bit. No, it, it works well because the the vampires mm -hmm. do not have gunpowder that's also bullshit i of course it is <laughs> but it, it's an advantage humanity has yeah okay okay sorry the vamp i keep saying the vampires they're called the nostros yeah yeah because yeah, yeah. of course they are yeah uh but that, that's pretty much it and mm. they're all fine there's also a 1.5 book yeah which seems to be a thing these okay. days yeah but because the cry havoc and cry fear aren't that big mm. a 1.5 it's like a short story it's not even a novella um called cry witch which actually did is, it add to the story enough a, a little bit but you kind of feel like it could have just been in one of the books yeah exactly you know it's not a different character it's still jack frey yeah it's Same not different period. cast of people yeah mm. it's so it's like Why? what's the point in this you're not even giving me a different Make perspective more money yeah well obviously mm. um but you know it, it's okay it's okay. okay it filled some time I won't go into the Nathaniel Rain. Um, I think it's a better premise. Yeah. Nathaniel Rain is basically a big evil okay. came um, the last city mm. of humanity almost uh, is almost conquered by this big evil. Okay. But then a, I think a regiment or whatever are mm. given special swords, which gives them powers. Yeah, no, that sounds like a worse. No, idea. it does. But the, <laughs> the swords, it turns out, were corrupted. And we're slowly corrupting them but they don't find out for years and years later then the soldiers who are corrupted that's become a part of the big evil then they become evil themselves no but that sounds worse it does sound worse but it's actually better than the jack frey if you read them better written or yeah okay just it's so it, this seems like through. a guy who will so he's highly rated on uh, goodreads what's he got <laughs> for the first book cry havoc is 4.8 it's 4.08 out of five and yeah. books are above four is generally yeah you might not like it or you might like it but it's worth reading i i think that's because you can read it in an afternoon so and it's you're a not nice gonna, quick yeah you're yeah. not gonna hate it yeah but to say it's above a four yeah we talked is about preposterous like yeah. it's preposterous yeah. like i would say out of five mm. i'd give it a 2.5 yes but you are so strict with your like i understand where you're coming from it depends on where you it's not bad it's not yeah. good it's it's the carlsberg of beers okay you're never gonna hate it you're never gonna love it yeah but it's good like i like the world okay if you just better names better little depth maybe yeah i, I like the whole premise i like uh, the nostrils the vampires i think i might read these actually it, it, do you know we'll go to our rating system mm -hmm. would i recommend it to you no would i recommend it to joe public yes why are you making it hard for me <laughs> i'm just saying hey don't you want to support this up-and-coming writer sure but <laughs> um the publisher lost me because he said if you're a fan of brem weeks yeah. and peter v brett yeah and you got to earn that 
But you, you just, it's got to be a better book than what this is. And it's a good book. It's just, you know, yeah, it's Carlsberg. Okay. Yeah. Well, most people like that, so. But no, people drink it. People order it because they know it. Nobody loves Carlsberg. Hey, I know people who buy cases of it. Yeah, it's cheap. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's amazing. No, no, but so. Okay. Anyway, that's... <laughs> Everything has its place, right? Yeah. That, that's my review. That's what I recently read. Mike Morris, Cry Havoc, Cry Fear, Cry Witch, uh, He Who... Uh, the names that annoy me. fights Nathana Rain. Yeah, they're real, <laughs> like, computer-generated, yeah. aren't they? But, you know... Like, the first one is okay, but then the... Yeah. Nah. nah. It's... It's a difficult one because it's very readable. Yeah. And once you read the first, you'll read the rest. Okay. Because it's like that, but it just... Even if I don't have your propensity of reading, finishing everything. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how many pages within it. It feels like 100, mm -hmm. but obviously there was probably like two, 250 or something. Yeah. If it had been a 500 page book, yeah, it would have been, I think, fantastic. Because okay. he, he's a decent writer. He All just... Right. Everything needs more. But if you read... All three together doesn't add, no. No, because they, they are different stories. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it just like the Cry Havoc, the first one. Mm. If it was just like a proper mm. first book, you know when authors go all out in their first book. Yeah, yeah. Like if it was just that, it would be, it'd be so much better. Oh, you like, mean like Ruthless? Yeah, like Ruthless. Okay. Yeah, if you just so you could yeah. have written on a book like Ruthless. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> like if Ruthless, if Ruthless's books were. 90% less. I don't know. <laughs> right. Or like Rothfuss in the fact that it's a book. Oh, yeah. Hey, you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Cry no. Havoc. Uh, Mike Morris. If you like Shakespeare, you will like this. What? <laughs> in the sense that they I don't like write, Shakespeare, so I won't like written. this. Ah, screw uh. it. There you go. Anyway, that's, that's it. That's All Mike right. Morris. Cry Havoc. Cry Fear. Read it. If there's nothing else to read, you won't hate it. All right, maybe we'll see. Yeah, my list of books to read is humongous, yeah. and the uh, books that are better than this book, hundred percent, yeah. is huge. Mm. So yeah, no, we'll see. What have you been reading? So I've been reading a. Uh, so I, I generally, so my my general philosophy of reading and watching movies and listening to music and everything is basically there's a whole planet why should i focus on the 10 million that lives in sweden like a lot of people do they, they find oh this is from my country i'm gonna read mm. it right because generally it gives you connection it gives me connection but in my uh, experience it's never the same quality mm. if you if you go to the top of the world and then go top of the sweden chart mm. it's not gonna be the same quality but i found a very very good sorry just go back to it. why is that do you think less people um do you think it's something to do with your language no nah. like you can write a good story there is a uh, back in history we have uh, a lot of famous authors like Pat, yeah. lago kist mm. uh, and stuff like that so um your language is a little bit limiting though isn't it yeah well it doesn't it doesn't lend itself it to stop him yeah, like he, he the the book the dwarf is like good depiction of evil and all its facets and weird person, but um, dwarf. yeah, it's a mm. famous book. But um, and it's only like about two hundred pages mm. in Swedish. Okay. So yeah. Okay. I recommend it to you. You should read it. All right. There you go. <laughs> Uh, is that your book review? It was a good book review. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so I found uh, a friend of mine recommended uh, a Norwegian writer. Okay. Even less of a country. Mm -hmm. No, not less. Less people. <laughs> okay. <Whoa>. Good, good. <laughs> uh, and um, it's from the author Siri Pettersen. Yeah. And the book is called Odin's Barn. So in English, that is The Children of Odin. Mm hmm. Uh, so of course, how do you say Odin in Swedish? Odin. Oh, you Odin. Say, you say Odin. Yeah. It's not Odin. No. Odin. Odin. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah. All right. Let's... Yeah, yeah. Why? So I, I <laughs> just presumed it was Odin. What's Thor? 
Thor. Get out. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Or Freya. Yeah, Freya. Wow. Yeah. I always find it bizarre that... Um, um, th- like nouns. Yeah. Especially nouns. Like in other countries. Surely we should just adopt how they're spoken in the country. Like place well, names. It's so weird that they have different spellings or... or are different so words even in different now, countries. Yeah, Makes yeah, no but sense. so okay. So the Nordic countries, even within those, there's some uh, intonation uh, yeah. weird. And if you go 500 years back in history, mm. there's totally different ways to say them. I mean, I, Sweden in yeah. uh, Sverig. Mm. Yeah. Or how would you say? Sverig. Yeah. Sverig. Yeah. yeah. So like, uh, that obviously that's hard to say, but still, who who am I to say it's called Sweden? Like I don't understand why that happened. Ah, okay, so you mean that, but, yeah, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like, I'm, I'm assuming some trader or a king or something went and presented him to himself to another king and mm. said, yeah, so I come from Sverige. And yeah. the guy's like, what? Sverige? What? Yeah. Okay, Sweden, done. Yeah, but there's, there's difficult words are out there already. Yeah, you know, like maybe. Krig- Kyr- Kyrgyzstan. Yeah, really, it's not that hard. I don't know Kyrgyzstan. Why. Kyrgyzstan, yeah. you know. There's hard words out there already, but like, you know, I, yeah, I find that's it weird. why nobody can pronounce it. Nobody hear about it. But, it's you know, not in the news. Got the EU and stuff. You think they'd go, okay, this is what the country's called because that's what they say it's called. Okay, well, is that the same thing as the Netherlands and Holland and? Well, no, that's it's, that's it's, bizarre. Yeah, that's bizarre and confusing and due to kingdoms, right? Yeah, but it's also bizarre in the fact that the Netherlands market themselves as Holland, yeah. just because it's in the common vernacular. And now, yes, to Holland is us. a district of the Netherlands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Weird. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. I think CGP yeah. Grey does a video on it. Yeah, I probably watch it. I yeah. just forgot. Yeah. yeah, but no, I find that bizarre. Yeah. Like you know, Odin. Odin's not my. Th- ah. Maybe a little bit. Uh, no, not mine at all. But you think that this is this is how you say Odin because that's our word. Yep. But then that doesn't work, I guess, with especially with English because it's such a bastardized language. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. All languages are um, influenced by each other. Yeah. So the more you trade, the more you get influenced. Mm. So well, that's why things. I can uh, read German, even though I know very little German. I mm. can like guess this mm. structural. Oh, but that's because you have similar roots. Yeah, like and that goes for like similar. yeah, but even some of the words are very similar. Mm. So like, and if you know like English, then that helps, and then you find double the amount of words, mm. and then all of a sudden you can guess what it is. Yeah. Don't you find that weird about place names that we haven't gone, you know, Sverige? Somebody has to care enough. That's high up. No, but you think that it just seems to make sense. So that should we force everybody who speaks English to say, oh no no no, it's Sverige. Yeah, well, you don't force them. You just go change maps right. and go, oh, look, um, the Swedes themselves, <laughs> they go, this is what our country's called. It's Sverige. Yeah. Right? And we don't so, want to be confused with Swiss. <laughs> well, no, not even that. Just, you know, it yeah. is Sverige. Yeah, like yeah, Sweden yeah. themselves have said, oh, by the way, yeah. our country isn't called Sweden. Well, it's called Sverige. Okay. So, you know? so why? On the opposite end, yeah. so on, uh, in English, one of the few, there's a couple of things that are pronounced like Swedish pronounced right. in the English side. Yeah. And that's ombudsman, for instance. Yeah, but you wouldn't say it like that. Ombudsman. Yeah, but it's this exact same sentencing. Right. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think uh, What does it mean in Swedish? Uh, a person that is... Uh, but is there like a direct translation? Like is it... You know, it's, it's basically a title of a function. Okay, okay. So this is what he does. Done. But it's not like om... Um, oh. Buds man, like because om is if, is it? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, it kind of, yeah. It's um, this guy speaks for me, man, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, that's what it is, but yeah, but th- then they have a different what's that got to do with place names, though? What, no, 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 so no, I was just giving a example for ombudsman and gratis is the yeah, two words that I know off the top of my head that are sound like Swedish mm. but are used in English language in the same way, okay. So it's not just the other way around, right? No, it's not. I I spent some years in the Orkney Islands, which mm. has a heavy Norse influence. Okay. And when I first started learning Swedish, yeah. ongoing, um, <laughs> I was surprised by <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised by how many words were similar to like uh, 
local slang you would get in Orkney but you wouldn't get anywhere else even in Scotland oh okay like yeah. to cry Don't. in Swedish is Greta huh? crying ah Grota Grota yeah um, in Orkney you'd say are oh, you greeting oh yeah so it's yeah. it's very similar and yeah. like uh, Scotland mm. Kirk mm. is the name for a church yeah it makes sense yeah yeah. so there's but you wouldn't get that anywhere else I, I find that really weird ah okay so it's yeah. only in they, they actually use it every day in well, Scotland they, or no, like well they, Orkney they use like greeting yeah. like for somebody who's crying oh, yeah, nice. it's very similar and Kirk is something you would get well, maybe maybe they more use in the Highlands both right or they only use the one Highlands they would probably say Kirk okay more than they'd say church it's so hard for me that's a name so yeah <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> what does Captain Kirk have to do with this <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, how excited are you for Picard I, I'm not even sure what it is is it a TV show yeah yeah yeah, yeah awesome it's gonna be awesome right yeah <laughs> 100% amazing. awesome that's the best character in yeah. the universe I better than Spock Worf no too too shallow too yeah have you seen deep space nine yeah and what are you talking no, about man? come on what are you talking about nah the Ferengi were the best part of deep space nine <sighs> Worf <laughs> when the ego he gets captured by dominion has to fight for his life you still <sighs> <laughs> I, I i never liked Worf. that's my what why. what do you like Worf? he's okay but it's just He's nuanced. Yeah, but too late. He's he's an alien in a society where aliens are accepted. So is Spock. Ish. I I don't think Spock has the same problems the Worf does. No. Because you're just after the bloody. Well, he's a product of the the bloody war. Mm. You know. And then he's brought up by people who mm. are enemies of. It's it's brilliant. Worf, no? No. Deep Space Nine? What's your favourite Star Trek? Um, uh, well, you're wrong. It's Deep Space Nine. <laughs> right? After Deep Space Nine used to be one of my favourites. Mm. But I think it's really hard to answer that question because... How is it? Um, Deep Space Nine is basically a space soap opera. More than the other shows are. Initially, yeah. Mm. But once the Dominion... Become, yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, Deep Space Nine wants Dominion in her is it, that's what I'm talking about Deep Space Nine the last seasons are freaking awesome yeah yeah. that's what I'm talking about like the first but, couple is, is yeah, yeah. And, but that's true for all yeah. uh, almost all when Cisco loses his hair basically that's, <laughs> that's when it gets good alright yeah and uh, oh the tiny ship is bullshit by the way yeah I know it's awesome but it's uh, that makes no sense that's too called? powerful what's it called I don't remember it was too long I think it's with D Defiant? Defiant, yeah. There you go. Why is it bullshit? It's too powerful it's, for this tiny thing. It's cooking to us. Yeah. yeah. No. It, it's built specifically, yeah, in <laughs> defiance of the, is it the Kittermer Accords? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I need to rewatch those. Yeah. Now, yeah, now yeah. they've been released in the uh, better Netflix. Volume. Yeah. Problem is that there's so many bad episodes, but you need to yeah. watch those too. Well, there's there's guides on, t on like the internet that says, just watch these. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. You know I mean? No, I can't do that. No, I I could I could do that with these space nine. Be a lot of garbage. Like I've said a million times, like Star Trek, the all, at least the old, yeah, four series. Or there's like the first two or three seasons. There's like one or two really good episodes, yeah. and then the rest is like, eh. Do you mean the next generation? The next generation, Deep Space Nine. Yeah. Even Voyager has the same problem. And yeah. Then. Yeah. After that, Voyager's all of a sudden, good towards the end. Yeah. yeah. The last three seasons or yeah. whatever is the opposite it's yeah. like too bad and the rest is awesome what do you think of discovery no really yeah i i i, I don't I actually think i haven't seen all i'm i, I might right. have missed like a one or two in the middle okay and it's uh uncursed uh, it's not like me to miss yeah star trek at all but uh, i didn't like it i didn't like the blue tiny aliens i didn't like the setting yeah um, it was too many things i didn't like Okay. Uh, but the new one is really, really good, even though it's too uh, tongue in cheek, but it's nice. That's Discovery. What are you talking about? Are you think talking about Enterprise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant Enterprise. That's yeah. the one I didn't like. The yeah. new one, Discovery. I yeah, really Enterprise like. is great. Yeah, nice. Discovery is good, the new one. Yeah. Um, except there's too much crying. Everybody's always crying on it. Yeah, but it it's gets too much. In with the times. But 
it's like you know <laughs> you know yeah yeah i agree it is too much crying everybody's crying yeah, all the time you have to be in touch with your feelings i know but it's 2019 yeah, men cry. <laughs> it's too much yeah you know yeah, yeah. so odin's band yeah yeah, yeah. oh Spot. yeah there's a book yeah, yeah. right all right so this is a brand segue <laughs> dude odin's barn yeah so clearly a segue is called segways because they get you from place to place yeah so deliberate thing like are they based on sex i have no idea probably the two wheel things that you drive around no that's what i mean yeah you know a segue yeah. is it was it called that because of that there's a different spelled word that's called yeah. like a sig something else well seg is like you know linking two things yeah so that's beyond me because i've but i'm wondering if a segue is called that because of that probably yeah it must be it's too much of a coincidence no, no, no. sorry anyway in my mind the segue is yeah. the only word there's only one word really? the other word doesn't exist it's weird because i never heard of it until like a week ago really yeah i don't think so and then so in my mind i could connect the segue part logically oh, okay so I'm like, yeah, this I can use this word for yeah. anything. Mm. But the first word, I'm like, mm. where do you come from? I think it's the problem with seg is it's one of those English words that don't sound right. No, it sounds disgusting, like smeg. Oh, okay, yeah. I, I was going to say, like, macabre. Yeah, macabre sounds awesome. It does it? It's like it, this. It... Oh, oh. Pa pa pa. Back in. Yeah. So, seg. I think the problem with it is that it sounds too much like one of those English words that don't make sense when you say them out loud. When you see them written, mm -hmm. like macabre, you think it sounds good. Yeah. I think it doesn't sound right. It, when Why? I see it written, yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, cool word. Yeah. But anytime you try to say it out loud, it y y nobody pronounces it correctly. No. Also, the br this doesn't sound like English. No, maybe yeah. that's it. Yeah. The yeah, but it doesn't work. Yeah, but so translate it into Swedish. Uh, Makabot. Is it? Is that a Swedish word? Yeah. What does it mean? Same thing. Same thing. Get out. Yeah. It sounds fine. So it's a Swedish word. No, I don't think so. I think no? it's a French word or something. Yeah, it sounds French. Yeah. How about the French say? Macabre. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Hey. It sounds better in Swedish though. How did you say it? Macabre. 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 Yeah. yeah, see, that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Good. Anyway. Uh, Odin's Born. Oh, yeah. Book? Odin's Born. Again. Odin's Born. Okay. So, clearly, from the name, it's set in a Viking-ish era. Explain. How do, you, how do you get that from the name? Okay. They live in the tiny villages in the woods yeah but how are you getting that from just from the name oh well, so odin <laughs> odin's children really yeah, 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 you're dense today i got you oh man yeah. i'm slow on the uptake yeah that's right uh, so odin's band yes. shockingly enough yeah viking it's setting it's crazy i know you're blowing my mind here buddy yes yes go on but there's a twist <gasps> Sorry, can I jump back? <laughs> Sorry. It's like I don't want you to talk about this book. I know. It's crazy. Uh, um, Nath <laughs> Nathaniel Rain, yeah. He Who Fights by Mike Morris. Yeah. Um, they double down. Mm -hmm. So the blurb on that is, if you're a fan of David Gemmell, mm. you'll enjoy this book. And I'm David Gemmell's biggest fan. Okay, so basically they insulted you three times <laughs> over. Yeah, right? <laughs> Yeah, three authors that I really like, yeah. and they've said, oh, if you're a fan of these, and I'm a fan of all three. Yeah. So, it's ridiculous. Who, who isn't? Is yeah. Question. Um, David, I could see people not being a fan of David Gemmell. Not his well, first couple of books. a couple of them. Like, yeah, it'd be impossible to like fantasy and not like David yeah. Gemmell. Like, it's... Like, he's, he's a... Maybe you don't like, like, certain... The, like the Drust or whatever like the, you don't yeah. like that character maybe but how would you like Drust I don't know yeah but how did you say Drust Drust I don't know but I haven't read his name in 10 yeah. years I don't think I've ever said it out loud yeah do you know when I was a kid like about 12 mm -hmm. no it would have been later 14 maybe mm. my mom got me a jumper with yeah. Drust the Legend on it ooh right and you were bullied all throughout <laughs> right <laughs> Ronan now yeah. would kill for that jumper. Of course, it sounds awesome. I would kill for that jumper. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Ronan you, then you didn't hand wash it and uh, like Ronan it. then purposely lost that jumper because <laughs> Ronan's mother 
made him wear it to a school Man, one day. No. And that did not go down well. No. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Especially in those times. They were yeah. not as kind as these times. No. You could have got away with that in the mid 80s when D&D was a huge thing. Yeah. Well, no, or when well, fashion no, wasn't was, a thing. No, no, no. Yeah, well, it still was a thing. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't have gotten away with it. You still would have been a geeky kid. Yeah. Maybe you would have a bigger click. That's yeah. it. Yeah. But would you get away with it now? I think you. Yeah, I think kids are kinder now. De- definitely, I even uh, read a study about it where people were go- going like, "Yeah, there's a bigger chance that people will go, uh, no, stop doing that or don't say that because that's mean." Oh yeah. And our time would be life yeah. and point basically, and then you Punch brush it off. Face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, that's good. Yeah. There's hope. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. We'll see. Where would you put David Gemmel? On the... On the what? Well, like, um, say you got you got your pillars of fantasy. So Tolkien would obviously be one. Yeah. It'd have to be. Yeah. Um, you'd probably put... Who else would you put there? Like, uh, it depends on what you mean with the pillars. Like, do you win the cornerstones of different genres? Or do you mean... I, I would say... Like, um foundations of fantasy not necessarily historical the best of the best kind like of yeah just like for uh, epic fantasy you'd go Tolkien although yeah. you might go George R. R. Martin okay yeah you know are would Tolkien be high fantasy yeah yeah okay yeah. so for epic fantasy you could go George R. R. Martin yeah. for swords and sandals uh, you could go well maybe not swords and sandals no. uh, what, what would game, game will be swashbuckling uh, maybe <laughs> but you know what I mean that yeah. kind of thing yeah yeah would swords he, and sandals probably work yeah. would he be that yes. yeah. pillar I don't know you know I, what I mean I, I don't think n- enough people that I know of have read many of his books it's crazy yeah I don't know yeah. I don't think he has a huge following in Sweden uh, like my friend he's read a couple but then mm. stopped and yeah okay I don't know yeah. I think it's a bit formulaic yeah hmm that's an interesting topic. We should have done that this week. Yeah. Next week. Next week. Next oh. week, we're going to do the pillars of fantasy. Okay. Yeah. You know we're going to disagree on everything. I don't think we will. I think there will be a couple where we come to blows, but I think a lot. Because they are who they are, I think it's hard to argue against some people. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Like, Tolkien has to be there. Yeah. I'm not a fan of Tolkien, but he'd have to be there. Not saying like, like saying even the saying you're not a fan is ridiculous. It's like, how's, it, how's it ridiculous? No, because the what do you mean, how's it ridiculous? You read it? How dare you? You sir? enjoyed it? Who, who are you? you I know. Th- are you the bloody thought police? Yes. I can think whatever I like. No. I can't. Hey, what? I have cameras everywhere. What is this Stalinist <laughs> Russian? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. So you have to respect it, even though if you don't like it, so it might be that. Yeah. So I'm not a fan. Yeah. It's like me. Going okay, to the yeah. world's greatest barista, about the but I don't like coffee, and, and going, ah, I'm not a big fan of this. You can't come at me and go, oh, you can't say I that. Think I have of course you can, because I don't like coffee. I think I have different um, uh, values ascribed to the word fan. Oh, okay, okay. Have. Oh, you're thinking of like something that cools you down. So, therefore, <laughs> <laughs> so no. that's why you're getting confused, because you're like, well, that doesn't make sense. So Yeah, all right. Fun with English. Yeah, <laughs> I thought this was some bad books, man. Come yeah. on. <laughs> so no, I, 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 I um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, that's that's clearly probably because I'm English is not my main language. Yeah. So I don't have. I think about that word in maybe three ways, and you have five or ten or whatever. Right. You know? So and that, those describe different yeah. things. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Okay, but anyway. Yeah, so I can be mm-hmm. not the greatest fan and still respect who he is or who he was to the genre. Okay, so why even use the word fan? Are you screaming like teen girl? So going, I'm not. I, 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 Maybe. I, I've read, I've read <laughs> most if of If Gimmel walked in here, would you go, Wah! Well, I'd be scared shitless because he's dead. <laughs> It'd be awesome though. He'd <laughs> be terrified. Hey, we yeah. deal with the unknown. Like, yeah. I find dragons. out how good my cardio is <laughs> as I ran away. Yeah, that'd be cool though. Yeah, I, I need more ghosts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. It's making me look over my shoulder. But, uh, anyway, Odin's band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Topic for next week though: pillars of 
fantasy? Yeah, sure. Cool. Good, good. That's Done. Good. Uh, so it's about a girl called Hirka. Okay. Uh, Nordic sounding names and stuff. Yeah. Uh, born in a... Or lives in a village and she's the only one without a tail. Everybody else has a tail. When you say tail, do you mean story or like an appendage? Appendage. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, everybody else has... Uh, oh yeah, the cover is basically a chopped off tail, and that's why I saw the cover, and it looks like a cigar. No, initially. yeah, no. But now that you said that, it's like it a is a tail part with muscles yeah, and tendons. That's a bit gross, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so she's basically half shunned, or like because there's like mythology in the village. Like if you mm. are, don't have this, then you're part of the other that yeah. are evil. Yeah, yeah. Not explained well, just. What's the deal with the tails? That's basically how everybody has them. They just have them. They just have them. And Is it also symbolic they, for something? Or? No, they just, that's how people live. They just have tails. They just have tails. Is this and like something from Norse mythology? No, not that I know of. It's just a thing in, in this, this book. book. Yes. They have tails. Yes, and also in connection to the earth and things around them, so they yeah. have some kind of magic. Right? And they're humans. Yes. They see okay. themselves as humans. And she's one without so but they probably. all have tails and she doesn't have a tail yeah so okay that's not a huge leap to assume that she's a human or something right well we'll see okay so i haven't finished the book. but they're not humans yeah but that's not how it's right why I do you want to spoil the book I have questions <laughs> man I have questions. Uh, no. it's interesting yeah, I'm yeah, intrigued. yeah so it's basically a coming of age story yeah uh, she's not accepted in the village she lives with the uh her father that's in a wheelchair is a pharmacist for the village but shunned too in a way when's this set i don't know like thousand bc okay. no not bc after christ i don't know 900 yeah. something yeah 80. viking era whatever okay but you're using words like pharmacist yeah oh, okay and wheelchair okay so i mean he sells herbs like a herbologist or okay yeah, yeah. apothecary i think is that? Nah, I don't know. He's just a local herb guy. Apothecary. I don't know. Yeah. So right. that's a pharmacist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. So just to say pharmacist, it makes me think modern. Modern. Day. Yeah. Yeah. No, not modern. Right. Yeah. Okay. And, and he has a wheelchair. Yes. A functioning wheelchair. Yes. He used to be a smith. So okay. So he made a something something similar. Okay. It's not a. It's not easy to get around, but he can like. Good. Did he also pave all the surfaces in this no. village? Okay. So he's barely moving around. Right, okay. And but there's the, okay, I remember one scene where he tries to catch her when she runs into the woods. Yeah, right. that doesn't go well. No. <laughs> does he have a tail? Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, how does that work with a wheelchair? Is there a hole? Oh, I have no idea. Alright, sorry man. <laughs> I'm being a dick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll let you yeah, go on. Alright. All right. So it's a good coming of age story, the characters are good, the writing is good. And it's really got like grabbed my attention right away. Generally, uh, I um, need more than a couple of pages to get into it, but this was easy to read. Uh, caught on like a, a well flowing children's book, even though it's not marketed for children, maybe mm. late teens and then normal people. Would you read this to your kid? Yeah, I've already started telling her about it. Oh, okay. Like, so I, I've, I'm, but I made it a. Um, uh, as a nighttime story thing, my kid is mm. six. Okay. So I, I uh, six. Yeah, but she right away said the same thing. Yeah. Uh, are they trolls? She's a human, right? <laughs> <gasps> Spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, that was her first reaction. So yeah. That's kind of cool. It was fun. And um, I wouldn't have thought of that. Trolls. Yeah. yeah. It's because you, your upper brain, yeah. uh, upbringing is Norse. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, and the setting is good. There's a bad guy. There's a good guy. There's a, there's a couple of friends, um, and she has to uh, also because she doesn't have a tail, she doesn't have the connection to the magic system. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a weed out system that's called the rite, a rite of passage, whatever. And all the kids have to do it, or they will be killed, basically. Yeah. And uh, I. Uh, and she's uh, scared and have to, but she she doesn't have magic. She doesn't have the tail either. So okay, and uh, it's about her struggles. And I think I think it's um, 
very well worth reading and I would actually recommend it to you. Does it sound any way like something you would read? I don't know. Um, I, I have read uh, Norse yeah. like uh, fantasy books before. Yeah. Um, is it Riceberg? Ooh. Or I'm sure it's Riceberg. Is it Riceberg? Mm -hmm. um, does the uh, struggling with it? He does the Norse mythology one. I'm sure it's Riceberg. Mm. It's, quite, it's quite old. Okay. Um, he did a big series. I've read obviously the Cornwell books, mm. Uthred. Mm. You know um, those and things. It's never really grabbed me. Yes, I agree. And this specifically, yeah. Um, it does sound a little bit like a fable. Yeah, I could I could get into that. Well, okay. So um, there's a. Uh, uh, have you heard of uh, or read Ronja Ravadotto? I don't even wouldn't even know how to pronounce what you just said. Okay, so uh, it's a famous book by Astrid Lindgren, I think. Yeah. Do you know who that is? No. Okay. Um, and this is kind of the same thing. Like it's well, I don't like Norse books either. Right. But this doesn't feel like a Norse book. Okay. Even though it is. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it better, but it's more of a adventure, um, in the woods. How far in are you? Well, about 30, 40%. Okay. And, and it, that, for me to have this high praise of a book that I've not got further in, it's kind of rare actually. So okay. I, I kind of like it. I'm 100% sure I'm going to like it. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't okay. know if you just haven't explained it well enough. Yeah, but that's my, uh, so I'm never going to be able to explain anything good. That's the, uh, Glad we do this podcast together. <laughs> for folks where we yeah, have to well. explain things, but I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like a children's book, and yeah, it, it sounds not, like there's a lesson. No, you know, feel you, like you don't need a tale to be yourself or yeah, something. But it's, you know. That's so. Lessons are um, uh, good if yeah. they're not over-explained and you kind of feel smart when you realize the same yeah. thing right but if it's in your face it's annoying yeah yeah this doesn't feel annoying at all okay it's just a well-paced nice written book um is it the first in the series or yes okay how many in the series three what are the rest called uh let me see good well you had me looking up cry havoc and all his books that was your choice to look up those but <laughs> um just Dead air while we wait yeah, for Life right to look this up. Odin's born. And do the gods, are they involved in this? Like, do we see them? No. Why is it called Odin's born? Probably gonna get, get to know that when I finish the book. Okay. But you, you don't meet any gods? Not so far. Not so far. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll give it a go. But it's just, I'm sure I've read books in a similar vein and they just yeah. haven't grabbed me. That's the thing. I've had uh, I've done the same thing, and this is clearly a good written book. And it, it's hard. Like right away when I started reading, I was like, "Yeah, this is gonna be good." Mm. And I don't know how to put that into words more than that. It's it's um, just flows well, easy yeah. to read. Uh, the story and the characters are interesting enough, and it's uh, yeah. Are you reading it in Swedish or English? Swedish. Okay, okay. And that's also, that's the reason I bought books. Because I hadn't read a Swedish book in probably seven years, mm. something like that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I need to uh, stop reading in Swedish Is again. it in English as well? I, must, I think so, yeah. Hmm. I, uh, maybe I'll give it a go. You should um, read it in Swedish. I should, yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a no. <laughs> that sounds like I should, shouldn't I? Yeah. Or try to. It's a good way, I guess. Also, the uh, you will have to look up a lot of words, but it's not all of the words. No, you know more than you think. Odin's burn. Yeah, I can yeah, yeah. work that out. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, the language is kind of yeah. It's kind. It's it's uh, 
not super hard words, but it's oh, okay. Uh, so it's teenage uh, level of writing. It, would you put it at uh, teen fiction? No. Young adult. I don't know. Not like I, I don't. Okay, so if a book is written well enough, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And if it's super aimed at a um, what the. Sorry, a light just went off. Ah, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, no great mystery. Somebody just switched <laughs> it off. Yeah. No, if, if his book is written well enough, it doesn't matter. And yeah. those categorizations just came... Used to be that... Okay, no way. Yeah. Uh, start over. Used to be that a children's book was a children's book. And it was a very tiny segment of age, right? And then yeah. there was a gap, and then there was a teenage book, and then there was a gap, and there was adult books. Now there's so many middle gaps and gaps are filled out. Mm. So, for instance, there's uh, well-known, famous books that could today be classified as children's books, that are, but they were not marketed or sold as children's books. Harry Potter. No? Yeah, probably, maybe. But Harry Potter is, like, it's young. Yeah, adult. I know, I know. Like, that's uh, really but, nice. uh, so there's another East... Uh, yeah, maybe there's a young adult or something. Yeah, East... The Silla Pullman? Uh, no, maybe no, not those. It's um, East Bjornesk folk or something. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, ice cave people, something. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, no, those. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, I, I might give it a go. Mm. I might give it a go. I don't think I will. Try the first one. Yeah. Okay. So, would you recommend it to me? Yes. Would you recommend it to the world at large? Yes. That's the it's thing. Right. It's so good enough that I would recommend it to anybody. Just a, it's you. It's that's the thing with some books like there, there are books out there which when i think about it i'm like i don't really care for this book but yeah. it just it just reads well it's well written yeah that, that's it just kind of flows. the thing yeah the, the, it's easy to read it's interesting all the time i yeah. haven't met one character i don't like like mm. it's it's just uh, it just it's, um i think we've talked about elizabeth maybe it's moon not the most before. revolutionary book but yeah. it's, it's a good book we've talked about elizabeth moon before yeah. haven't we? um her books which are Maybe not the best books ever, but the way she writes, yeah, you read I love everything. all her books. Yeah, yeah. It's just because they read so well. Even the boring parts of her books yeah. are nice. She mm. she fills pages of just marching. Yeah, and you're like, okay, I'm yeah, enjoying nice. this. Oh, this, yeah. <laughs> this is how people things should be. Read. I need to read her sci-fi. I haven't done that. I've read some mm. um, polar yeah. or something. But you're not into sci-fi. I I, I I read some and I enjoy it. I just. Um, yeah, I've read, I've read sci-fi. Mm -hmm. You know, people have bought me sci-fi. Um, I've tried. My problem with sci-fi is that some of it's good, and yeah. it's it's hard to. Uh, some of it's just too outlandish. But I guess that's the same with fantasy. Yeah. There's a who was it? Stephen Morgan, I think. Mm -hmm. Did the Steel Remains? Yep. Um, Good fantasy. Mm -hmm. His I, I read his sci-fi because I like this fantasy, yeah. and he's known for sci-fi, and that's very good. Okay, that's um, one of them was made into Netflix recently. Mm. The Carbon something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's him. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's him. I'm sure that's him, unless I've totally misremembered. Mm. But I'm pretty no. sure it is. Okay. Or it's based on his books anyway. No. I'm pretty sure it is. No, that's based on another guy. Uh, Sure it is. Oh, what's his name? Uh, never mind. Maybe. I, maybe I'm in this room. I don't know. My example of that is Nick No, it's not. No. I love everything he does. Yeah. Though, but yeah. Uh, my example of that is Nick Peromo. He made um, a series that got a huge traction in Sweden when it was translated to Swedish from, mm. I think, Polish or something. Um, but the magic system and the, those books are ridiculous. People floating flying under the earth doing things and then like oh i'm gonna shoot lightning bolts through the earth up to uh, i'm like no 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 next yeah <laughs> yeah it's not it's not happening I, I i just cannot picture that in my head <laughs> i'm sorry i'm out yeah i but it was so annoying i bought the first five books or something and i'm like no no after one i'm like nope i don't even know if i finished yeah. the first <laughs> that's the big problem with kindles or e-readers yeah you you buy so much Mm -hmm. Just because it's so easy. It's like yeah, it's one click, click, one click, one yeah. click, one click. Ooh, five of them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Discount. Ah. 
Yeah. And you go, oh, I've got 500 books I'm never going to read. Sound like me on, on video games. Yeah. Oh, this uh, $50 game just costs five now. Yeah, yeah but I'm never <laughs> going to play it, so it's still five you know, shouldn't yeah. spend. And that's intangible. Mm. Good. Should we move on? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wait, wait. Oh, okay. wait, wait, wait. What's happening? So, you are uh, better at explaining books and things. I need to learn. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure. So if we're going to do this well, you need to give me pointers. What should I think about? What should I do from an expert to a novice? Uh, not an expert in any way. I think cause, um, and how should I consider the book I read? Uh, it's, it's difficult. I don't know. Do you like it? Yes. I mean, obviously. You but if I say yes, that's not plot, enough. Plot, structure, characters, all that jazz. Mm. You can uh, do that. But... Um, a good uh, springboard is the blurb. Yeah. The author's blurb. They lie. <laughs> of course they lie. But it's a good springboard because um, you can take that as your basis. You know, yeah. this is what they've said it's about. Yeah. Is it about this? I, I genuinely don't know. Um, I, I have a tendency to over talk. Mm -hmm. um, and it runs through everything I say <laughs> or do. Um, gets me in a lot of trouble. I used to work in... Uh, public relations, uh, copywriting, okay. whatever. Yeah. And my boss at the time would get angry at me. Uh, Why? Lebanese man. He, he shouted at me, but in a funny way. Yeah. Well, I thought it was funny. Uh, <laughs> he was just super annoyed. And <laughs> yeah, he'd give me a press release and he'd come back and go, no running, no running. It's too flowery. It's too flowery. <laughs> Why are you using a hundred words when one will do? Yeah. And that's my problem. Okay. So, so opposite them. Concise. Okay. You know, punchy. I don't know, man. All right. Yeah, who knows? That was not helpful. Of course, at all. it's not because it's a style how you, you are. You know, yeah. I may as well just record myself twice. Oh, yeah, yeah that would be a much better podcast. I don't <laughs> think it would. Be. I don't think it would be better reviews for sure. I doubt it very much. <laughs> I doubt it very much. I like to review. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. It's hard to uh, nail down things it's when it's like. If Feral things like oh yeah. I just like the book yeah it just slows <laughs> like, yeah and the moon was in the yeah. right angle of, I don't <laughs> know <laughs> it, it is trying to articulate your thoughts is the yeah. hardest thing um, but yeah if if you like it, the book you know that says that's a lot. gonna be my reviews every time now yeah I like it you should read it <laughs> <laughs> yeah give a brief premise like, yeah. my Jack Frey uh, review there wasn't up to much. Also, you basically spoiled the whole book, so I don't have to read it now. Well, I haven't. You have no feel, idea what happened. No, no. You don't know I, what's I happened to his brother. I can guess. You don't know what's happened to the vampires. I don't know what's happened because the third book isn't out yet. Oh. It should be out this summer, or so Mike Morris has said. Okay. Yeah. Sure. But then Mike Morris's publishers said it was like Peter V. Brett and Brent Weeks, and yeah. that's a lie. Yeah. That's so I don't know if it's out in summer. No. Yeah. I lied. So, like, what's yeah. the topic this week? The topic. Yeah. Pillars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, we were going through uh, subgenres, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, we were to pick one or two that we liked. Yeah. Or we can. Should we just go through? So, so okay. What is subgenre? Yeah. Okay. In fantasy, there's way too many subgenres. Subgenres these yeah. days. And subgenre. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Genre. Genre. Uh, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Which language are we Sub speaking again? Subgenres. Uh, Subgenre. Yeah. Okay. Submachine guns. Yeah. I don't right know. Well. Anyway. Guns. Yeah. Know. Good. Um, and they all like into, sometimes overflow into each other a little yeah. bit, and authors doesn't stick to one. They make a book about two of them, yeah. maybe, and stuff like that. Um, so you're so just gonna go through all the subgenres that we kind of know of. Yeah, and then we're just gonna cherry pick. Yeah, yeah, because some of them are ridiculous, and yeah. some of them I would never read and haven't read. Yeah, so I know nothing about them except that they're silly. And okay, not for me, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, okay. So an example of that is like uh, romantic, anything. Okay, because it's it takes romantic a, fantasy. Yeah, it takes away. Uh, oh no, romance is the genre. Romance. Romance. Well, like Daniel Steele. Yeah, but worse. Because it's not good written. How's that fantasy? I don't know, but it's definitely. Have you seen any fantasy bookstore lately? That section is growing and yeah. growing 
and growing. And soon Grimdark is going to be like in a dark corner mm. behind it. Is that know. because of the aging population? And there's a lot more women of a certain age. I think so. Is that um, incredibly sexist? No, no, no. So one of the things in... Uh, I read an article about the small publisher complaining publishers complaining about the Swedish book market because if you don't publish a uh, mystery novel aimed at women mm -hmm. or aimed at everybody but also women mm -hmm. you're not gonna make money bloody women spoiling everything I know unreal can't they uh, or they should read fantasy hey come so the day we get more that better we fantasy. can have babies ourselves yeah <laughs> no wait i don't want yeah. a big carry no 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 that yeah. seems like a hassle yeah it does doesn't it <laughs> yeah they're all right they can stay okay <laughs> anyway so what sub genres have we got okay just high fan i was gonna rifle go. through them all right done high fantasy epic fantasy low fantasy portal fantasy urban fantasy contemporary yeah yeah uh fantasy nothing else Okay. All right. <laughs> Which means fantasy is a subgenre of itself. Yeah. No. I don't okay. know. Paranormal. Yeah. Slash paranormal romance. Okay. Because yeah. of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's very fantasy romance. Yeah. High fantasy romance. Right. <laughs> like you see when <laughs> I think you can skip all the romance ones. No, no, no. That's your favorite genre. I admit it. Oh. Young adult fantasy. Yeah. Children fantasy. Which. Yeah. I didn't think about this much. I kind of thought that yeah. was the same, but yeah, sure. Uh, fairy tale retellings. Yeah, I can see that. Sword and sorcery. Uh, heroic. Yeah. So Gemmo. That's Gemmo. Yeah, it's Gemmo. heroic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Almost like every character he writes is a hero. Yeah. He d nobody does anti heroes are better than Gemmo. Okay. Yeah. Morning Star. If anybody wants a good one. Okay. But I. Uh, uh, where was I? Medieval I think fantasy. Has an anti here. Hey, sorry, go on. Sorry. <laughs> Medieval <laughs> fantasy yeah. of Arthurian fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, historical fantasy. Yep. Yeah. Why does Arthurian need its own? Because uh, it's. Shouldn't that be like in medieval fairy, fairy tale? <laughs> no, because <laughs> medieval at least. Yeah. I, I think the difference is medieval is like. A, Yep. You know, medieval knights, but right. Arthurian is like a, it's almost the high fantasy of medieval. Yeah. So it's 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 basically it's this it, it's very much, uh, you know, damsels in distress. Yeah. You know, um, okay. I think uh, what's his name? David Eddings does Arthurian very well. Okay. You know, in uh, the Belgarian, yeah. when he has uh, the knights of Fos Tinter yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's very much Arthurian, very much of the uh, how the Renaissance viewed medieval knights. Okay, you know, going on uh, quests and yeah, yeah. rescuing damsels and poetry and okay. you yeah. know yeah, yeah. that type of. I, I think I can buy that. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, comic fantasy. Yeah, uh, science fantasy. Yeah, that sounds like mm, a, yeah, steampunk a oxymoron. Yeah, but okay. Uh, Grimdark. Yeah. Gothic and dark fantasy. Yeah. New weird. I've heard of this. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, it's basically urban secondary world fiction that subverts the romantic right. idea about the found in traditional fantasy. What? Yeah, okay. But when you see the writer, you can see what they mean. So China, China Melville? What's yeah, yeah. Name? yeah, okay. And yeah. I agree that it's fancy, but it's also all over the place. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I feel like a lot of these could be just, you know, one. Like you, you have uh, contemporary and urban, are two different ones. Yeah. But, well, yeah, they're kind of the same, aren't they? Yeah, of course. It's doesn't have to be though. Yeah. So it could be urban eighteen hundreds. I don't think it could because then I think that's that's a different thing, uh, especially eighteen hundreds. Uh, that's steampunk. That's, that's not urban. Steampunk has another connotation. It's uh, a little bit, but I think when you go eighteen hundreds, yeah, it's always steampunk. Unless it's like Powder Mage. Yeah. Is, did you say Powder Mage? No. But that's I guess Powder Mage is pretty much Brian McKellen 
yeah. started that and that's his thing but now there's a couple of other people doing yeah. it as well but uh okay should, should we just go through them one at a time and let's skip the romance because come on <laughs> come on hey that's a huge I, I'm, I'm saying that because listeners listen I, got, to I that. got nothing to say they read that they love that good for them respect that there'll be a podcast over there somewhere yeah and it's uh, not gonna be us yeah <laughs> this is any book we please ah okay right and only two listeners you and me that's it that's all we need buddy. that's all we need <laughs> yeah yeah we're shouting into the dark yeah yeah, yeah. sorry right. so i had a question from a listener yeah what's your favorite epic fantasy epic fantasy it's a bullshit uh question it's so hard it's so hard what's yours uh name of the wind you say that right yeah. you say that but if you take that um because epic, epic fantasy fans. No, because epic what it is, yeah. you got to take it all. What do you mean? Wise man's fear is in there as well. Yeah. The slow regard of quiet things, or the quiet regard of slow things, or the fast regard of little things. I can't remember the name, but you got to take all that because that's all all of it. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. The fifth season. I just read those. They were really good. The what? Yeah. The Lord of the Rings. The fifth season. Yeah. What? No, no, no. This I just read these. They're pretty good. Okay, he's showing me a picture. Yes. It's good. Uh, N.K. Jameson. I feel like I read that years ago. Um, my favourite. Yep. It's difficult. George so, R. R. Martin. Clearly Lord of the Rings. It's not. Why? Uh, if Lord of the Rings stopped after the second book, yeah. maybe. Yeah, but the battles were cool. Have you read the third book? The Battle for the Shire? Yeah, a long time ago. It's it's not good it's not even written by tolkien mm. well it's written by a tolkien but not yeah. tolkien like lord of the rings is two books and then they shoehorned in a third one from money so you mean like wheel of time wheel of time um i'm not sure if we've discussed the wheel of time <laughs> i've read them all they're i i i have i have a real problem with that book because mm -hmm. there are no um so I haven't read all. I stopped at ten. I think. Yeah, you should read when Brandon Sanderson takes over. Yeah. Um, the world's fantastic, but there are no stakes. No. Oh, yeah, at the yeah, end, yeah. like, yeah. I'm pretty sure I can spoil it because. Yeah. yeah at, Sanderson does the stakes better. He wraps it up. So. No, I mean in the fact that nobody dies. Yeah. And he keeps going. The on stakes are huge and whatever, mm. but nobody dies. Yeah. Nobody dies. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Like every author does an epic fantasy, will throw in a death. Yeah. Because you got to. Because otherwise, the the stakes aren't real. Yeah. You know, everybody lives fine. And I mean, you can have drama, whatever, and whatever. But if there's no payoff, yeah. hey, it, it was real. It was a slave for a couple of years. What? <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I I think they're great books. Yeah. I, I genuinely think they didn't. There didn't need to be fifteen books in that series. No, nope. um, I can't remember a hundredth of what happens in that book because I think it all just rehappens numerous times. Yeah, and it's like, oh yeah, in this book they went there. In yeah, this book they, this guy went there. That's yeah. all you remember from. Yeah, yeah, and amazing world building. Yeah, amazing world building, but no. no. Um, I'd say George R. R. Martin. Yep, has to be there. The, He's such a good writer. And the Game of Thrones series is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Sanderson's um, The Oathbringer uh, series. Which Would you call that? It's 100% epic. Like he literally said, I wanted to write an epic series. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. I don't know, man. It feels too... What? So his magic system makes it so technical. So it doesn't fit. <laughs> what do you mean? No, but the way he explains magic, it feels almost steampunky always. But it's not, I know. In the, what? Yeah. He, it's because he has proper rules for things. I know. And that's no, why. You're thinking of his other series. Which one? The, the Ascension jump, books. Yeah, Jumping Around. Where they have metals and stuff. No, no, no. The, the other one. The first one, where they use the magic to propel themselves. And yeah, that's the yeah. metal one. Oh, it's based okay, on metallurgy. That's, right. yeah, that's yeah, totally yeah. different. Yeah. That is 
uh, more steampunk, and mm. it gets that becomes steampunk in when they Later on. jump forward. Yeah. No, I'm talking about it's Oathbringer. Oh, okay, mm. where where it's knights and yeah, yeah. bloody the wind swept land. You are missing out, man. I, like, I won't you, read them until they're done. You you got it. No, like, they're so good. I've done that mistake with the first ten books of uh, Will of Time. I, ah. I, I I will not. Yeah, that's true. You haven't read Game of Thrones. Uh, the first three, four. Yeah. But waiting a long time for the next one. Yeah. Um, let's see. I, I don't know what my favorite is. There's too many great ones. I love the first two and the third. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Why? Sure. What's next? Uh, low fantasy. Explain. The example giving in the list. So, okay. First of all, I have to give. Uh, this is a blog called Thoughts on Fantasy. Yeah. Uh, that made a very good list that we're going through. Yeah. And. On Low Fantasy, there's a picture of Harry Potter, and the examples are Harry Potter, uh, Stormfront, Artemis Fowl, War so, of Oaks, City of Bones, Twilight. So young adult fiction. Yeah, it feels like it, right? That, that is young adult fiction, yeah. all of those. Okay. Um, loved Harry Potter. Um, not a fan of Pullman's uh, series. Uh, I've read Alcatraz by uh, Bran Samson, which is good, but... Um, yeah, I don't know what else. A fantasy that takes place in a real world or something very like the real world that includes magical and supernatural elements. Yeah, but then, but then there's like in that blurb, there's like yeah. way better books. <laughs> yeah, and, like, and uh, all of those famous. They all sound like young adult though. The examples. Yeah, that's give. the thing. Like, uh, let's skip that one. That yeah, doesn't okay. sound right. Next one, Portal Fantasy. I'm not sure this is a real genre. Now, I know there's a lot of famous books, like yeah. Chronicles of Narnia, Peter Pan, Alice in Wonderland, whatever. Outlander by uh, Diana Gabaldon. Mm. Gabaldon. In, um, in my mind, in the Narnia. portal is just a thing, and then the other things happen. No, but I, I think... The connection is there. I, I think it's uh, people from our world. Yeah get step through a portal to a fantasy world mm -hmm. i think it is a distinct genre yeah i know but you're not a fan no generally i don't like those yeah books. there's um guardians of the flame by uh i think it's joel rosenberg mm -hmm. uh i read years and years ago and i always liked it it's about a bunch of college kids who get transported to a fantasy world because they're um, so Dungeon Master, the TV show. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> is it? But I remember reading it when I was younger and going, "Ah, oh, it's really good." And it's one of those books that stick, but you can't remember the author or anything, no, okay, so yeah. you're not sure. And then I went and tried to reread it again not so long ago, and it's not good. It's not good. No, it's not good. So maybe Portal Fantasy is what? Not great. I, I don't even know the um, uh, name, but it's um, a dude who travels to a portal, ends up in a fairy-like kingdom, becomes a great wizard or something and those books i read i think one or two stephen lawhead yes yes those turn me off of portal fans oh really yeah because they're, they're but i've read all uh, yeah i think i read them but then i was entertained but at the same time I was, yeah this is bullshit. the silver hand and yeah. other books i think it's like three in there that's yeah. a good pickup man <laughs> yeah um yeah that's good mm. i, I reread those not so long ago you like them? Yeah, I liked them when I was younger and I reread them. Mm. And it's it's one of those that when you reread them as an adult, you go, the language in this isn't very uh, mature. Yeah. Um, but I think a lot of fantasies like that. Yeah. Like it's matured a lot. Okay. You know, they don't treat people as stupid or as stupid. Yeah, maybe. Anymore. So, yeah, I, I like those. Stephen Law had a That's good author. I think I've read everything. All right. Yeah. I did not like them. After that, I've never liked horror fantasy. Okay. What are we on next? Urban fantasy, contemporary fantasy. Good. Uh, Butcher. Jim Butcher. Big fan. Yeah. Big fan. Uh, read them all. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Done. Yeah. Please He's... read more of it. This, so Okay. I hate steampunk. Yeah. But I love this. Yeah. But it has to be in a right way. Sure. Can't be too much. Can't be too little. Yeah. Have to be like smart about it yeah and so that's why i like Jim butcher so the uh 
at a vampire court somewhere. Yeah. You, he connected to the mythology or whatever of that place, yeah. and then it, it makes sense. It Not, does, even though it's ridiculous, but still. Do, do you know what I like about uh, Jim Butcher's Dresden Files? Mm. Is um, and you've talked about this before. It's uh, um, some books they escalate too quick, yep. and you got nowhere to go. Yeah, because it's escalated too quick. Every single one of those, and there's what twelve in the yeah, series now. More, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a huge series. Yeah. But every book has escalated a little bit, and it's insane that yeah. it can keep going. <laughs> but it has worked. Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert: He's a freaking ghost <laughs> at this stage, but it has just escalated just yeah. enough. Yeah. That, that it's... it's kept going, and it's crazy, but yeah. it works. It's good. I tried reading. So uh, he like the Iron Druids series. Is a worse copy of this. Okay, okay. And it's not as good. Yeah. But if you like the setting, it's still entertaining. Yeah. In some way. I, I wouldn't go all the books though. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's uh, kind of interesting how uh, one. <laughs> yeah. How many of this these books were huge before Ian Butcher? Yeah. Like. There's right? um. What's the name of the woman? Uh, what examples do they give? Maybe. Uh, War for the Oaks, City of Bones, Angel Fall, Nowhere, and Moon Call. Any authors? Uh, so City of Bones is the... Oh, that's young adult fiction. Yeah, yeah. that's why it's not for me. Yeah. And, uh, um, there's, a, there's a woman, Ash, does a book series with a half-vampire lead as a woman. Um, and there's vampires in that it's urban fantasy that was like the big one before dresden okay. or at the same time i just can't remember it for the life of me no all yeah. of these that's the thing so for me to find a book in this genre yeah. it's so hard because i look at the cover and go nah yeah teen romance whatever yeah. throw it out but so urban fantasy is basically present day setting um but there's a fantasy element yes so it could be a wizard could be there's elves running around or yeah. something, but it's in the modern world. Yes. And people aren't really aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. Except the ones in the know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Jim Butcher, great, great, yes. great. Um, and it's always the... the uh, if you do it well with a little bit of smarts, mm. it's so nice because you can tie into so many things yeah. in every day and it makes it fun. I always got the impression with his books that um, he kept writing himself into a a spot and then having to get out of it yes so like you said about you know the different courts of vampires and stuff yeah. it's like he had an idea and he wrote it and he was like oh that's a great idea yeah that's awesome and then next book he's going oh shit <laughs> uh, <laughs> how do we fix this yeah right so yeah. oh but then there's this but yeah. it works yeah, he's and done it, it real it makes well it, uh, because every so for instance i'm not a fan of a couple of the books in the middle i think they're yeah. like three and a half or four sure. maybe three yeah. and a half yeah uh, entertainment value for writing three sure yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but it's still worth reading and still worth going just because he, as you say he just yeah. makes it work yeah he makes it like the escalation works like i couldn't picture when i read the first three books that he would go on this far no, no. <laughs> if it, if i've known that i would mm. never have read them because that's not my type of book but it works and it's good and uh harry dresden Yep. Um, as a character I like him yep. and he, you shouldn't like you know what I mean if you yeah. wrote down his tropes and his characteristics yeah, yeah. and the way he is you go oh god just another he hero down in his luck I, I'll hate this but he yeah. works yeah. he's very well written underrated uh, TV show as well based on it don't know if you've ever seen yeah, it yeah I know but uh, it didn't I liked it yeah but Too it grabbed me in the way like yeah. so i can see that if you were a normal viewer yeah. you just turned that on and it's like no yeah so that's why i didn't like it. yeah i think they got bob wrong as well the skull in the tv show that's what kind of threw me a little bit yeah. bob's yeah, great in the books yeah it is. great <laughs> great great list of side characters yeah absolutely phenomenal great great anyway what's yeah. next uh romance so nope. next one is nope no nope <laughs> no <laughs> young and old fantasy do you read a lot of that I, it depends like if an author I like yeah. dips into it mm -hmm. so like Brandon Sanderson did it with the Alcatraz series yeah. um, I'll, I'll read it I'll read it just because yeah. I, I like the collection okay like there's also um, and like I'd put Harry Potter there I'd put Philip Pullman there mm -hmm. 
you know, and I've read those. And also, uh, Joe Abercrombie recently did uh, the Half yeah. uh, series. You recommended that first book to me. Yeah. I could clearly tell it was totally different and yeah. I did not like it. He wrote it uh, specifically for a young adult. And that makes no sense to me. Why? If you write a... You, so, if you wrote the same book without that mindset, mm. but just removed 10% of the worst greediness, mm. that would be the same thing, but it would be a normal book. That's, Better that's essentially what he's done. No. Like, Joe Abercrombie were both fans. Yeah. Grim Dark, that's yes. what he does. It the does Half well. World series. Awesome. Um, but no, I'm talking about the yeah, Half. Yeah, no, yeah the yeah. one you don't like. Mm. Um, you just said it's awesome. Yeah, sorry, so I meant the first series. No, no, you yeah. said it was awesome. Ah. Take that. <laughs> it was good, but then... No, yeah. you said it was awesome. Ah. <laughs> but basically, uh, that's what he's done. He's, he's removed the grittiness, the blood and guts, the yeah. snot. But um, for him and his writing style, that like meant, that, that's basically removing all the depth. I, I do him a disservice. I, I like them. I like them. But anyway, that's that's young adult. So Also in this young adult... Yeah is my most memorable moment of picking up a book because of the cover looking awesome yeah and it was the throne of glass by sarah g mass okay i'm Never like yeah this. badass assassin ninja drizzit looking yeah. chick nice and then i read the uh, a Terrible. quick review and uh, I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, sure. This person has uh, says it's the best series ever. Yeah. This person says it's the best series ever. So I'm like, sure, let's let's try it. Starts out, she gets thrown in a dungeon, mm. um, shackled to the wall, and the whole nine yards. The person keeping him there, keeping her there, comes in, and in the middle of like this is the entrance scene, where like describing, yeah, mm. yeah, okay, this is happening. There's the f a couple of sentences that go, yeah, 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 I'm so angry now, I want to kill him because I'm a badass assassin, and but he has such sexy eyes, and this is so, <laughs> he, oh, I can see the abs bulging. I'm like, nope. Yeah. And I, I was like, 20 pages in, and I just threw the book away and got annoyed as fuck, because any person in a dungeon would not think like that. <laughs> would you boot David Eddings, young adult? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and that's actually young adult that I recommend. Mm. It's great. He's dead. Is he dead? I don't know. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's dead. Yeah. Okay. So that's that. What's next? Okay. Children's fantasy then. The examples are, like the trucker series, maybe. Alice yeah. in Wonderland, Never Ending Story, Oz. Not the TV show. Because that probably wouldn't be children's. Yeah. Northern Lights, Artemis Fall. Mm. Mm. I think that's basically young adult fancy. Except that yeah. the examples for these young adults is more lovey dovey. Mm. So I think they're interchangeable. I think we've done that. Yeah. Next. Fairy tale retellings. Uh, this can be good. Yes. Um, I read. Did you finish the book I recommended for you? What was that? Based on the Greek mythology thing? Did I start that book? <laughs> <laughs> that was the question. Yeah. Let me see. The book's name was... I'm going to say no because I feel like I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. So it was a retelling of a, a tiny, tiny... No, not tiny, but a Greek myth. That's a different genre, mate. That's not a fairy tale. Ah. Fairy tales like um what buddy, the German lads. Who are the German lads? Who did all the fairy tales, Red Riding Hood and all that. Grim. Grim. Yeah. yeah. Grim fairy tales. That, that's what it is essentially. Mm. You you could throw in, I think, uh Jonathan Norrell and Mr. Whatever. Is that a fairy tale? Yeah, well it's got uh fairies and stuff in it. Yeah, it definitely sets. All right. Yeah. Reimaginings, isn't it? What, what examples okay. have they given? Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. Uh, Cinder. Uh, Beauty and the Beast. Beer and the Nightingale. Tangled. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I can see what they mean. Mm. Um, yeah, th those can be fun. Yeah. I, I don't really have a lot to say about this one. Uh... 
I okay. So <laughs> you're right. <laughs> yeah, no, this is hurting my brain. Yeah. Jesus, <laughs> um, lift. So it's basically serious. fantasy with uh, witches and princes and princesses and. I, I I think it specifically has to be a retelling of a fairy tale. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, but there's elements of that in a lot of books. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. A good one, I think, would be the Witcher series. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Which, have you read those? Yeah, I read two. What do you think? Uh, don't grab me, but I like the mythology of it. Right. And um, But I never actually, so I like the games, mm. but I never actually like the... Um, I don't like Geralt. I don't like the setting. I like the characters around. Sure. I like the world, but I yeah. don't like the main protagonist okay. and stuff like that. So I have... Um, issues with it but i still find them awesome yeah so it's still worth reading but i don't think it's the best book ever sure so yeah it, none of them are novels though they're all short stories yeah yeah and it's a collection but then now they're starting to come more okay yeah. i couldn't get into them why just the way it's written i just mm. it was like uh, I, I, I literally the style of writing mm. didn't enjoy it all right that was it anyway what's next heroic fantasy sword and sorcery so David Gamble's the obvious one for me. Mm -hmm. Big fan. Conan, Elric. Oh, I love the Conan books. Uh, I haven't read many. I don't think there are that many. Okay, I probably only read one. I think there's more than one. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Probably because there's mm. more movies than one. <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote Conan? Howard. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Sprague de Camp and Lynn Carter. No. That makes no sense. No. That's not true at all. What's, why is it their, their names there? Ah, pseudonym for uh, Lehman or Leon? No, that's not true. There you go. And Sprague, the camp, pseudonym. No. No. He, he, <laughs> no, I'm telling you, there's no way. All right. I'm gonna look this up quickly. Who wrote? Who invented Conan? It's clearly written on them. Robert E. Howard. So why is he? Maybe he wrote stories based on Conan. Oh, yeah, probably. But it's Robert E. Howard. I knew that. Yeah, I knew that. That's why I said yes first. But yeah. Then I got confused by this. But yeah, he's written like. Oh. Early books of Conan. So oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. But Robert E. Howard. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, great. Sword and Sorcery is... I, I think it's what people think of when they think fantasy. Yeah, like easy yeah. fireballs. Yeah, uh, well, it, it's it's a little bit more D&D, &D, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And... Um, uh, Although, I think heroic fantasy is a bit different to Sword and Sorcery. Sword and Sorcery is a bit more D&D, &D, Conan and stuff. Yeah. Heroic is slightly different. Potato, potato, man. I don't know. Because like, I would say Gemma is heroic fantasy. Yeah. But I wouldn't say sword and sorcery. There's not a lot of sorcery in Gemma's books. Uh, sure. That's why I like him. But... Uh, yeah, I don't know. So... Uh, I have a problem with genres. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, I can see it. Yeah, I, I, I don't agree with yeah. the... You're literally crutch, clutching your head. <laughs> so I, I, it's I, like, ah, oh, this is hurting. Yeah. yeah. So, Mighty Heroes, Damsel in Distress, Magic, mm. Swordplay, Moral Ambiguity, Action, Conflict. That's true for any fantasy book. Yeah, but I... I and if it's not, it's not the book I want to read. I, I think fantasy as a whole yeah. has tropes. But it's more of this trope, or more of this trope. So, okay, for me, categories is basically the setting. That's the only category I almost agree with. So, okay, steampunk, yeah, okay. easy. Uh, romance, easy. But it, I think it's... Urban, easy. Okay, okay, but then it's the characters who inhabit it as well. Yeah, but that's more good yeah, writing guess, or bad writing. Yeah, okay, or setting. Yeah. Okay, anyway... I, I can see a difference. Yeah. That's, that's good. So that's why, for instance, uh, I have a 
Um, some of my favorite books might be high fantasy, but if I see high fantasy on a thing, I'm like, no, I don't. I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> That's fair. Because I just want a good book. Why do you have to make it hard for me? <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. next? Historical fantasy. Big uh, fan. Big fan. Yeah. You pick a historical period. Yeah. Make fantasy. Uh, His Majesty's Dragons by Naomi Novik is a very good example of that. I don't like all the books. Mm. I've read all the books. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, yeah, you haven't read that series, right? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. Historical fantasy. Does it have to have fantastical? Um, well, of course it does. Otherwise, it's just historical fiction. Yeah. So, uh, who's the author? Damn it all to hell. It's uh, this was a good book too. The Golem it, and the Jinn. Yeah, I think you've mentioned this one before. Mm. Um, oh, I'm trying to think. Who the author is? It's called New Newton's Canon. It's by um, <sighs> it'll come to me. It'll come to me. Uh, big fan of him. Uh, he's one of the uh, Gregory Keys. Okay. Hmm. Uh, so he's one of those authors that should be better, better like uh, known, blah, more well known than he is. Yeah. Um, do you know him? Recognize the name. He did the Briar King and things. It sounds familiar, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he did a series called, I think it's called Newton's Canon. Okay. And it's basically, it's at uh, turn of the century. Okay. Well, no, it'd be before then, wouldn't it? So, because Newton mm. is their uh, founding father, so like 200 years ago. Okay. Beginning of the 18th century, maybe? Yeah. Um, and it's basically all that, like there's balloon ships, but there's also magic. And stuff uh, I'm out no but it's it's fantastic like, yeah. it really is um, it's one of those the age of unreason it's called it's got right. Newton's Cannon's first book a mm. calculus of angels Empire of unreason the shadows of God okay. and it's yeah it, it's just because really, it has like uh, Benjamin Franklin yeah and people like that and I, yeah. quite, I quite like that it's fun I like when they add characters you know from history yeah generally uh, but I, I don't like steampunk, and if, mm. if it's airships, it's not steampunk, though. I know, but airships go. Nope, that's basically an out for me. Uh, really? Yeah, almost always. Yeah, I like a wee airship. If you read, uh, I'd rather have a dragon than an airship. All right, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. A dragon will win every time against an airship. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So why would you buy? Why would you buy? If you can buy both of them, why would you buy? An, that it makes no up, sense. Upkeep, I guess. Still, I keep upkeep for a dragon squad. Hey, like hefty. you need a like staff of people to run the airship. I Depends the size of it, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever read uh, Tales of Thomas Covenant? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not all of them. I think of. So I read all of them when they came. No. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. So I read them in the nineties. That's all mm. I remember. I was probably <laughs> too small to understand all yeah, of the yeah. things, and then. I couldn't find more than what I got and yeah. that's when I stopped and then I couldn't go back to them because yeah. I remember them leaving an impression of me sure. that was annoying but I liked them okay because they were like he was whiny and complaining yeah. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and I still remember that to this day but I didn't want to continue the story yeah okay so it's a, it's a series of books that defeated me. I just couldn't finish them. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. what was your reason? Uh, probably the same. I just didn't like them. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I didn't like Thomas Covenant. Maybe that was... I can't remember. Like, yeah. the same as you was a while ago. Like, it's interesting that it's a different type of character, but it's not. Mm. It's too... It's the same as I, I, I have a tendency, if I read a, norm, a, roman, a normal book, fiction... Yeah. Or whatever, or based on true stories, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, if it's too real and grim, I'm like, yeah, I can't still get the news. I don't need to. <laughs> I don't need this in a book form. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, so that Life I never. Is sad enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I don't. Why? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna wallow in this ten people's pain. No. Yeah. Like that's fair. Yeah. Never been for me. Hey, sort of fancy. What's next? Last, I think. Uh, no, there's a couple more. Alright. Uh, comic fantasy. Uh, Terry Pratchett. Yeah, that's all you need Holt, to say. Yeah. I guess. And you should read all of them and enjoy all of them. And yeah. 
That's it. Genius. Next. Tom Holtz wrote that. Science fantasy. Blend of science fiction and fantasy where advanced technology and the supernatural both come into play. Give me an example. Mm. Struggling with that one. Perdido Street Station. Don't know. Uh, the fifth season is the one I read recently uh, as I keep coming back to. Oh, okay, okay. And it's uh, people living in a world that basically breaks all mm. the time. And if you can't adapt, you die. Okay. And it's a lot of old... Um, so sometimes humanity went past a certain point and then, oh yeah, we make robots or whatever. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, but then the society breaks again. And then oh, that sounds this. quite good. Yeah, it, it really was. Okay, I'm okay with that. I actually explained something decently. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you look at the blurb, it's like, that's nothing like yeah. you said. <laughs> what? <laughs> but yeah. Okay. It's a really good book and a good series. Uh, it gets too winded in the end, but it's, uh, yeah. it's, wor it's worth reading. Great. What's um, would you say science fantasy and steampunk are the same thing? I don't know. Are there goggles? <laughs> yeah, I feel I like you gotta have goggles and for I don't it to be like steampunk. steampunk so I don't know. Next one is Grimdark. Or probably his favorite genre? <sighs> Bar none. Uh, Maybe act the action oriented. A heroic, epic, grimdark. That's my. That's I think that's my wheelhouse. I, grimdark. All of them. Which is your favorite? It's real tough. I, I'd say the majority of the authors that I really, really like and buy everything mm. the second it comes out yeah. is grimdark. Yeah. Yeah. But you can find better and good books in other. Well, individually, yeah. like uh, especially epic. Yeah. Like there's some words are just. If like, it ties all together. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. But yeah, Grimdark is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, gritty, grim setting, uh, more character centric uh, interactions, and then narrower scope. Yeah. Not just oh, huge kings and yeah, whatever. You know. It's the sort of book that if a character has a poo, mm. they have a poo. Yeah. If they go on a march and they need to poo, you're gonna hear that they're having a poo. And they have blisters and yeah. it's sweaty and it's. And the smart. guy next to you smells. Yeah. You know, it's, that's the way it is. Sort of thing, when you get in a battlefield, you get the blood and guts. Yep. You get the smells. Makes it real, makes it better. Yeah. Um, Sometimes it goes a bit too far. Yeah, Sometimes true. I'm reading stuff and I'm like, I, I don't know what. <laughs> I don't need to know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, do I really need to know the exact way intestines smell? No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How do you know? Exactly. Yeah. Did you go and like... Yeah. Research this <laughs> and comparing pigs and yeah. horse and yeah. we got a lot of examples for this I presume. Yeah, Prince of Thorns, Lies of Luck Lamora, Blade itself, Game of Thrones. So Joe Abercrombie, Scott the Black Lynch, Company, Brent Weeks. Yeah. Uh, Black Company is Nichols, is it? Glenn Cook. Ah, uh, Glenn Cook. Um, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, big fans. Would you recommend it to a person never at fancy? Yeah, hundred percent. Depends I, I, on how old they are. You wouldn't recommend it to a kid. No. Um, but yeah, you would because it's the best books. It, it, they are. <laughs> I, I genuinely think they are, and they're they're quite a modern thing. Mm. I think. Um, Which also is kind of interesting. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I think so. We. I think we talked about that kind of explosion of authors. Yeah. Your Brent Weeks, your Patrick Rothfusses. I think Patrick Crawford's came after your Brent Weeks, your Peter V. Brett, mm. Scott Lynch. They all came out around about the same time, yeah. like turn of the century, sort of time, didn't they? Like two thousand, yeah, yeah. like Maybe all of them. There was a yeah. lot, and they were all fantastic. Yeah, and we haven't seen the like since. Nope, I don't think. Not even close. So yeah, fantastic. Yep. Oh yeah. Okay. What's next? Gothic fantasy, dark fantasy. Fantasy and horror mixed. So uh, oh, more okay. zombies, more... Uh, so uh, may maybe Mike Mars yours. with his vampires. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll shout out to Mike Mars there. Yeah, yeah. Good man. But they were on an island and it makes no yeah. sense. So no. So yeah, maybe. I don't know. Also, when I hear this, I think um, later setting. So more medieval. I don't know why. Like even past medieval. Like... Yeah, fifteen, sixteen hundred, I think. Yeah, uh, I don't know why. Maybe what, are, what examples have we got? Uh, Sabiel, Grimoire, Graveyard Book, Coraline, Perdition oh. Street. Okay, okay. Uh, 
You know, Perdition Street Station keeps popping up in all of these genres. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should read that. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, you know what we didn't talk about mm-hmm. uh, for contemporary slash urban fantasy? Mm-hmm. Um, Neil Gaiman. Yeah. That's essentially his books. Yes. Neverwhere, you know. I haven't read many of his books. You should. And Nancy Boys, they're all that. I have a friend American who gods. love them. They're amazing. Them. I have a problem with his world building. It doesn't fit my head. Okay. Uh, and if it doesn't, you can't continue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, same as American Gods. I I, uh, I think that TV show is awesome. Uh, I think the, the way they portray the... Uh, I instantly recognize the gods. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, yeah, 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 nice. Uh, in the book, I'm like, who? Why? Like... Like when they, they, they have this Indian god, makes no sense to me the way they portray him in the books. Right. Uh, in the TV show, I'm like, yes, because I get all the cues like right okay. away, you know? That's interesting because I'd flip it, loved the book, mm-hmm. loved everything about the book, mm-hmm. loved Shadow as a character, yeah. TV <laughs> show. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I think uh, Odin's casting was good, mm-hmm. uh, but the TV show, they got Shadow wrong. But it's one character. It, 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 it's the main protagonist. So? Like, no, the, if got, the world building in a TV show is good enough, then it's fine. I, I disagree. Like, he's the main protagonist, and they got him wrong. I don't like the limp of the main character, not the limp uh, in Deadwood, the way he walks. But he's freaking awesome. Are you being facetious now? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Because I think I have a legitimate I mean, point. He clearly has a hip problem. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Pretty sure a legitimate point. Anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's right. the last one is the new weird. Which I think. What examples do they give? Because uh, Jeff I'm... Vandermeer, um, and Shina Melvin, same book again. Yeah. And I have you read the Annihilation series? I don't think so. Yeah. It's uh, it's on my list. It's on my Kindle. I should read it. Yeah. It's just yeah. one of those Both that need I need to read more. Yeah. Probably before we embark talk on something about stupid like a podcast. <laughs> we talk about subgenres. Well, not really. We, it You need to base something off something. So now we have a template to go yeah. back to. Why would you recommend this as? Or why would you put this yeah. as? So, okay. Sure. So Mike Morris is a gothic, dark, grim, dark, powder, mage. Uh, oh, you lost me already. Yeah, heroic. Confused. Uh, yeah, fantasy. Yeah, sure. There you go. And Odin's bond would be fairy tale retelling. I actually would kind of. Yeah. Um, is is mythology based fantasy? Is that not a subgenre? I feel like that should be its own subgenre. No, I think that's fairy tale. A mythology? A myths fairy tales? No, but they're similar in vain. Okay. okay. So I, I would add that to that. I don't think they are. Though. Well, I guess. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Myths, yeah, or okay. There were fairy tales for a different age. Yeah, or historical okay. fantasy. Yeah, okay, okay. So, connected, right? Because yeah. it depends on how... Okay, okay. Yeah. You won, you won, you won. Right. Yeah, I argued myself around your side. Yeah. Anyway, go on, so... So you won versus yourself. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. And I lost. Yes. That's weird. <laughs> that's how weird. often does that happen? <laughs> All the time. Yeah. So anyway, sorry. So, fairy tale? Mm-hmm. That's it. Uh, no, fairy tale. Uh, probably historical and. I don't know. I, I, Young adult? Yeah, just because that it's written in an easy to read way, but it's not written with stupid words. Oh, okay, okay. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. For idiots, but not by idiots. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good. Excellent. Hmm. Well, that's good. That's uh, subgenres. That was yeah. an interesting topic. This is running a little bit longer than we thought it Always would. Always does. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> anyway, for me, Ronan V, it's goodbye, goodbye. And from Leif, just one final question before we leave. Yeah. Um, is there an update on Scott Lynch's. Definitely. So HBO Next bought the rights to make the third book into a TV show. Is that and true? once that's done, they're gonna maybe create a new series. 
and then after that he's gonna co-author a video game and when that's done oh no wait i'm talking about the game of thrones guy oh yeah sure yeah next one scott lynch the never gonna happen the fourth book never gonna happen you don't think no okay you heard it here first it's never gonna happen scott lynch if you're listening <laughs> uh please pick up the gauntlet um so goodbye have a nice one Thank you.